Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This video introduces some of the work we've been doing recently on how environmental stressors driven by anthropogenic change can affect the collective behaviour of animals. Collective behaviour is widespread across varied taxa and some species heavily rely on collective behaviour for safety against predators, choosing a nest site and stealing chicken nuggets. In this extreme example, which is a video I filmed early this year in a small pool in the river in Trinidad, there are three different species of fish, all showing strong but different styles of shoaling behaviour. But such habitats are subject to anthropogenic change and this may interfere with collective behaviour and reduce the fitness of these social animals. Just like other habitat types, rivers are subject to multiple environmental stresses from human activity, such as changes to temperature, flow, lighting and noise, and are subject to invasive species, pollutants and increasing turbidity. But we have a practical problem. How to measure collective behaviour in conditions like this? We have movement in three dimensions and many individuals to keep track of, plus suboptimal conditions like a complex background and often murky water. The answer is we don't, at least not yet. We instead do it in the lab. Multiple tracking software packages are now freely available to track in two dimensions the movements of multiple individuals in a video. We use ID Tracker which also keeps track of who is who throughout a trial. Some of the pros are typical of lab work in general, but there's also the benefit that all individuals in the group can be monitored, which is needed for calculating social variables. If only a small proportion of the group can be monitored, for example, if loggers attached to only a small minority of the group are possible, then social parameters can't reliably be measured because you don't know where most of the other individuals are. But like many other lab studies, there's a loss of ecological relevance and in general for investigating multiple stressors in the lab, recreating realistic stressor conditions can be tricky. This is an example trial from our first paper exploring the effects of anthropogenic disturbance on collective behaviour. Specifically, we tested whether pile driving, or rather the playbacks of pile driving, which is used in the construction of things like wind turbines in aquatic habitats, affect shoaling in sea bass. I'll also use a video to illustrate some of the many metrics that can be calculated from trajectory data to quantify different aspects of behaviour, especially collective behaviours. So with the onset of pile driving, we found that the fish reduced their swimming speed. They also became less cohesive and tended to be further away from their nearest neighbour. They changed their shoal structure and tended to be positioned more side by side rather than having a nearest neighbour ahead of them or behind them. They were less aligned in their direction of travel, so they faced in different directions more often. And overall they became less correlated in their speed and direction. However, when we repeated this kind of experiment with white noise and stickleback shoals, we only found one significant effect of the noise treatment on the shoaling behaviour, which was again this effect of the bearing of the nearest neighbour. So from, this, from our work on this so far, it seems like the effects of anthropogenic noise may depend on the type of noise and all the species which probably isn't surprising given variation in the acoustic properties of sound sources and the biological differences between species. But that does make generalisation and prediction for how a species will respond to a particular noise source very difficult. We've also been looking at the effects of water stability on shoaling behaviour and published a paper last year seeing how it affects collective decisions. We found that the breaking up of shoals in turbid water which has been shown in previous work too, is due to a sensory constraint, not because of the perception of risk is less in turbid water, which is an alternative hypothesis. Although our results suggest there may be negative effects of anthropogenic change on collective behaviour in fish, the greater decision-making ability of groups or individuals in groups may help animals avoid areas subject to suboptimal conditions or make them more tolerant to exposure. In a previous study, we showed how larger shoals of fish are better able to track a dynamic resource, in this case darker refuge areas. So possibly they're equally as good at finding areas that are less subject to stresses. And this is something we're working on at the moment, 